Hi, my name is Chris Catrone, and I'm representing uh, the new group Platypus at this forum um, that we have organized. Uh, here at the School of the Art Institute, I teach Marxist critical social and cultural theory, especially through the works of Adorno and Benjamin. A uh, theme that constantly runs through my classes here is what is the purchase of critical theory for society and politics today? Uh, Platypus uh, takes its namesake from the unrecognizability and resistance to classification of the animal. Um, and it began as a project for a new journal, a publishing vehicle dedicated to investigating problems and tasks inherited from the old 1930s, new 1960s, and post-political left of the 1980s and 90s, namely the uh, currency of Foucault, for, for example. Um, as with our namesake, we feel that an authentic left for today would almost go unrecognized according to the received categories of the left, or if recognized, only as a living fossil. Um, towards the end of reconstituting an authentic left, uh, beginning here in Chicago, but now with groups spawning elsewhere in places like New York, uh, since last year, we have organized reading groups, and now with this forum, a series of public fora in order to discuss the potential for reformulating the left towards social emancipatory politics today. Um, starting from these activities, we will pursue research and journalism dedicated to reconstitution of the left. Uh, we have a distinctly Marxian background, and we focus on the history and thought in the Marxist tradition, but in a critical and non-dogmatic manner, taking nothing for granted and departing from received wisdom of all kinds and treating the history of the left as a subject for our free reappropriation in the present. We do this because we recognize our present, the social politics of today, as what has come to be after the left has been largely destroyed and liquidated itself over the course of at least a generation. Um, it is our contention, uh, and it's our provocation, our signal point of departure, that the left, as it has been historically understood in its best traditions, is dead and needs to be entirely reformulated, both theoretically and practically, at the most fundamental levels. We in Platypus decided to organize this forum on the issue of imperialism in the left because we find that given current events, the issue of imperialism and the left provides a good frame for investigating and interrogating the present crisis on the left, both here in the United States and internationally. Uh, the politics of anti-imperialism has been problematic for the left for quite some time, but has taken on particularly grotesque forms in, most, in more recent history, and especially in the present. The politics of anti-imperialism has largely lost whatever coherence it may have had for the left in the past, and today, betrays symptomatically the left's severe dearth of emancipatory social imagination. For example, the present anti-war movement on the left has been stuck on the one hand between problems of fighting the last war, meaning applying inappropriately the template of the Vietnam War and the counterinsurgencies waged by the U.S. and Latin America in, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, where the U.S. fought against movements for progressive social change and Stuck, on the other hand, tailing after the crassest opportunism of the Democratic Party and the present defeatist moods about Iraq among the ruling elites, for whom the more Iraqi and, Ameri and American dead in that conflict uh, means the better for pressuring and marginalizing the Bush administration, however little the Democratic Party might or could offer any different policy. In this way, um, in this sort of double way, the left has abdicated the possibility for a responsible politics for progressive social transformation and emancipation. Instead, a con contrarian mood prevails in which U.S. policy and its relationship to the social and political realities with which it grapples are opportunistically vilified. It seems enough to say that the U.S. is an imperialist power and to derive politics from this hypostasized characterization. In doing so, however, the left avoids its own inconvenient history its own role in how we got here. The most crass expression of this is the hatred of Bush and of the neocons, um, including entertaining the idea, unfortunately more endemic, endemic on the left than we would like to admit, that the 9-11 attacks were orchestrated by the US government. For instance, there was a talk given recently in Chicago um, through the Open University of the Left that entertained this idea. 
Um, we in Platypus recognize that leftist politics today is characterized by this deep despair about the possibility for social change. No one on the left seems to actually believe in the possibility for a transformed and emancipated world. Whatever vision does exist for the possibility of social change is much too derived from a wounded narcissism and animated by the kind of loathing expressed, for instance, in the 1960s by Susan Sontag to the effect that the white race is the cancer of human history. As such, the desire for change has become utterly reactionary in nature. The left has devolved into an apologetics for the world as it is and for existing social and political movements that have nothing in common with social emancipation. In this way, the left threatens to become a new right. For example, an assumption about the Iraq invasion and occupation, more or less explicitly articulated, is that democracy cannot be imposed on Iraq or that Iraq is clearly not ready for democracy. This is, for instance, the implicit line of the Democrats against the Bush policy, uh, that they should have left w well enough alone with Bush. In some ways, importantly, um, and it's disarticulated from other issues of social policy, the Democrats are, in fact, criticizing Bush on the score from the right. When this is not the explanation offered, then the Islamist insurgency is dressed up as expressing the self-determination of the peoples of Iraq. Other examples are Ward Churchill calling the office workers in the World Trade Center on 9-11 little Eichmanns of US imperialism. There was also the civil rights attorney Lynn Stewart who said that Sheikh Abdul Rahman, the, the man who orchestrated the first World Trade Center bombing in 1993, might be a legitimate freedom fighter that history still has to show whether he might be. Two minutes. In these ways, the left seems to have become completely unmoored in its most basic orientation towards the issue of greater social freedom. This disorientation evinced on the left in recent years has long historical roots going as far back as the 1930s, if not earlier, which I might get into later during the Q&A, but suffice it to say for now that the historical insights and examples from the left have become largely an occulted legacy for the present. And the left today has decomposed largely into competing apologias and rationalizations for a wretched social and political reality. This reality is one that the left has in its long degeneration over the course of at least the last 30 or 40 years, not only failed to prevent, but has actually helped to bring about the sooner this de decomposition can begun, begun to be turned around, the better. We contend that the very future of humanity depends on this. But such turnaround requires, first of all, recognition of the problem and recognition of its depth. That is what we in Platypus are dedicated to investigating, the history of the demise of the left, so that a social emancipatory vision for the world can be regained anew. As we say, the left can only survive by overcoming itself. Seriously interrogating the received categories of social politics, such as imperialism, is essential to reestablishing a coherent politics that has any hope of being able to change the world in emancipatory ways. The enemies of social progress have their visions and are pursuing them. Some are more reactionary than others. The question only is, for us now, what are we going to do on the left?